Hello everybody. Hi y'all. It's Kimberly here. I am in my kitchen and I've got some really good natural light. I like the light in here. And yes, this wall is brown, ugly brown. And I've got the white cheap old flat panel here. And yeah, that's a electrical panel right behind my head because this house is very small. So uh, panels in the kitchen just straight up on the wall. And I'm going to show you why I don't turn the light on in here. I'm going to go up and over the... Ooh, 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 hope I didn't... There is my light fixture. They sprayed it, blasted it with that uh, popcorn stuff. So it's kind of ruined. So uh, today, well, I got a lot of response from my Miss Kick'em in the Balls videos and my self-defense video so I'm going to just do a little demonstration of how to make a proper fist and how to do some uh, crotch kicks. Uh, I'm just going to use my wall for demonstration because I don't have a heavy bag, I don't have any uh, demonstration uh, models or anything like that so <laughs> we're just going to do it this way. Okay, I'm going to turn around here and here's my hand and I have man hands I have a huge knuckles from popping my knuckles and yes it does make your knuckles get big if you pop them I never popped the knuckles on my left hand for like 25 years or something and for some reason I just have a habit of popping my knuckles on my right hand and my right hand was significantly bigger than my left hand and so I thought that was weird, so I started popping my knuckles on my right hand, and it only took a few months for them to get knotted up like these, so it does it does happen. And I've got a little bite mark from, not really a bite mark, a, well, yeah, my puppy sunk her tooth into my hand there, but, and I've got some scars, and I got my second knuckle right there, I don't know if you can tell if I can pop it out, sometimes I can pop it out. On the top, oh, you can't really tell, but that second knuckle from the pinky that was all broke, and I've split that one in half and the pinky one in half, and I think I kind of messed up both the other ones too. But anyway, what you do is you take your hand, you curl your fingers inward like that, and then you bring your thumb over the first two knuckles. Don't ever put them in like that. You're going to break your thumb. Your thumb's going to your thumb's going to collapse like that. And it's going to make your your knuckles will not be strong enough anyway. This put your thumb over the first two. It kind of braces your two knuckles. And whenever you do make a fist, you should have that little pocket in there, but kind of closed up. Make sure it's closed up, but not clenched tight, you know. Don't put all your energy into that. Just make sure it's fairly tight and sturdy and when you are punching you're gonna want it to see the slope of my from the knuckles down my wrist all the way down it needs to be like that don't have it like that you're gonna break your wrist and don't have it like that because you're gonna break your wrist and you know because you don't hit people like that you punch so when you're making a punch it's gonna extend forward like that all the way and you're gonna kinda have it actually at a not straight on, not like that, but you're going to kind of have it kind of curved to the side and you're going to go outward with your shoulder, putting your shoulder into it. So when you're punching, it's going to extend all the way from your shoulder and you're going to use, you know, just enough of your body weight to reach out and over to connect that punch, but not you don't want to punch into it and push your whole body in because then they're going to, you know, reciprocate by punching you straight in the face. And it can literally break your jaw or your neck that way. So you always kind of clear your head a little bit. But just remember to keep that, um, that sort of, not really a, it's, I don't know what degree, maybe like a 15% turn on your, your wrist, you know, not all the way straight up, but you're going to have it like that because that way, when you extend your wrist, your top two knuckles, those two knuckles are going to be the contact points, and you're going to 
contact, you know, wherever you're hitting the jaw or the chest or the arm or whatever you're trying to hit, you know. Okay, now I'm going to show you just a few of the low kicks. This is my foot, and uh, I've got some mosquito bites, so don't be alarmed if you see them. <laughs> they look horrible. I sprayed mosquito spray on some mosquito bites that I already had, and it made literally a chemical burn. Okay, so whenever you are making a kick, you're going to cock your foot like that. I'm going to rest it on the wall right there. I've got marks on my wall from... I had something up against it and I had to move it to make this demonstration. But I want to repaint all this because this is a flat, horrible paint and it catches everything. So, um, basically, I'm putting it up here because my leg is tired. But Whenever you are kicking, you know, you have to be careful. You don't just flail out a kick like that. You're going to turn your leg somewhat like that and make a contact point like that. And it's going to be kind of like not quite turning your ankle on the side because you don't want to break your ankle, but you're going to extend through the very top part of your, I mean the bottom part of your your foot right there, right under the ball of your foot by the your toes. Not so much by your heel, but you're going to make the first contact with that and it's going to slowly follow through with the rest of your foot. So whenever you're kicking, that's a high kick and then there's a low kick. So if you're kicking somebody, if you're aiming for the crotch, like that. That's just a short little demonstration I wanted to give. I wish I had a proper heavy bag and a setup and everything, but I kept getting a lot of requests to show some self-defense techniques, so that is just about as close as I can get. Okay. I wish I had a better setup. I wish I had my heavy bag and everything set up, but I don't. Um, someday when I do get one, then I'll, I can give a much better demonstration. But that's just a little simple demonstration. How to make a fist, a proper fist, so you don't break your wrist or your thumb, and how to make your kick go uh, when you're aiming for a crotch kick. And, oh, well, you can also do a front kick. Let me just demonstrate that. This is easy. When you're doing the front kick, it's basically, you're just going to snap it from the knee. You can hold your knee up and then just snap it like that. Snap. Now I've Made marks all over my wall. <laughs> Eventually, I'm going to paint it. Okay. Well, those are just simple, simple little things you can practice. That snap kick in the front, you just are kicking with, you know, an extension through your kneecap. Or not through the kneecap, really. It goes from your hip through your knee, but you don't want to swing completely out from the knee because you can, you can uh, damage your knee, so you don't want to do that. Just make a quick snap and you touch with the ball of your foot and like that side kick that I was doing remember it's just you kind of turn your foot a little bit and you're going to crease with that contact with that side of your foot and like the front kick is like that with your toes and then the the side of your foot will be for the side I don't know if I was aiming that right will be on the side of your foot well, I just wanted to give that little demonstration just in case if anybody really doesn't know how to kick or doesn't know how to make a fist. That way you don't break your thumb, you don't break your fingers right there or your thumb. Make sure it's always over and have it kind of like the, where the wrist is, you know, not back and not forward. Just at a real level kind of uh, just a nice little arc. Barely, barely just an arc over your wrist. That's all it is. Okay, well, thank you so much, and thank you. I'll see you later. Turning you off.